Surus, give us a short introduction of yourself. Who are you? What are you doing? <laughs> um, my name is Surus Varavar. I am an American um, radio journalist currently working for Deutsche Welle English based in Bonn, Germany. I am also a freelance journalist. Um, my area of, of specialty is, is technology journalism and the internet. Um, I've done a lot of work for National Public Radio in the United States, uh, CBC Radio in Canada. I've uh, also written for The Economist and Wired Magazine and Slate and various, various other places. Um, I have just completed a book called The Internet of Elsewhere, um, which is coming out in April 2011. It focuses on the history and the effects of the Internet in four countries around the world, South Korea, Estonia, Iran, and Senegal. So let's focus on Senegal. I think this is also good for you, Georgina. <laughs> Just give us a brief overview about the history of the Internet in Senegal. The history of the Internet in Senegal. Well, um, I think like in many places, um, <laughs> the Internet in Senegal has become... Um, what initially started as an academic project. Um, it grew out of... of um, actually an American effort uh, uh, called the Leland Initiative that was a, an American government project in the early 90s to bring um, the physical infrastructure of the Internet to Senegal and other places in sub-Saharan Africa and the developing world. Um, it, uh, it eventually grew to, um, to the point where it is today, where the Internet reaches a little bit over 10% of the population. Uh, I was just looking at some figures earlier today, in fact, and... Um, less than 1% of the population of Senegal are active DSL subscribers. Uh, however, when you take into account people who use the internet, which is most people, use the internet at publicly accessible cyber cafes, then that expands out to roughly about 10%. What kind of role does voice messaging audio plays in Senegal? Well, I think Senegal, like in many places in the developing world, um, the majority of people are illiterate. Um, according to the most recent uh, CIA fact book statistics that I've seen, um, only 40% of Senegalese people, so that's four out of 10, um, are literate. And when we talk about literacy, we also have to remember um, we're talking about literacy in French, which is the colonial legacy language, and not literate for the most part in the languages that people actually speak on the street. Um, so I think that's important to keep in mind. So as a result, audio communication, verbal communication, is extremely important. Uh, radio and television remain by far uh, the predominant forms of media. Um, and those are, of course, broadcast in local languages, which even if you don't speak French, you can have access to if you're, if you're from Senegal. Um, so I think voice communication is, is extremely important. How do people use it? For which cases? I haven't encountered any specific voice examples. I mean, I've seen, I think probably the, the, um, the best type of example, I guess, that I could see, which is kind of falling apart now that there's been such a predominance of mobile phones, um, is that, you know, in Senegal, there was this model of what were called telecenters, which were places, public places where you could make phone calls, and many mm. of those are now being transformed also into cyber cafes. And I think that um, given that mobile phones especially have become so cheap um, in places like Senegal and many other countries, um, you know, uh, mobile phone penetration in, in Senegal, I'm pretty sure is in like the, it's definitely a majority of people, I forget what it is off the top of my head. Um, but, you know, I think that that the fact that you have a voice communication tool like that that wasn't available or wasn't available as widespread for as cheaply is extremely important, even just in everyday situations, not just in terms of media, um, but just in terms of being able to call your children or your spouse or your friends to do business or meet for a coffee or whatever. So what is the role of mobile? It's, it's, it's very dominant in these countries. Uh, could you give us maybe some examples? What kind of applications uh, really work? Did you find any? Um, I mean, my area of, of research was mainly on the internet uh, okay. and not so much on the mobile side. But um, I can say that, for example, in Senegal, there's a product or there was a service uh, uh, that was started a few years ago um, called Manobi. Uh, which was um, started by a, a Senegalese guy who had been educated in France. And it was a way for uh, farmers and fishermen to use text messages as a way to check prices and things like that. It's not clear to me how successful a project like that is. 
Um, but there are other types of projects in Africa uh, that have really taken off, um, especially for banking and finance right. uh, applications. I know in East Africa, in Kenya in particular, uh, they're using a service called M-Pesa, uh, which is very popular and it's very cool, which, is, which allows people to use their phones almost as like mini banks. So I can uh, send to your phone uh, a certain amount of money and you can take your phone with a code and take it to yeah. an office and get actual money. It's actually spreading all over the Yeah, exactly. The so I think, I think those types of services are, are really great. Um, and I, I would like to see them. I mean, I would love to be able to do that here in Germany. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, it's interesting that there are all kinds of, of projects like that. And I think in my research, um, you know, I came across lots of applications, not only in, in, in Senegal, but uh, in Estonia and other places where there are services that exist in other parts of the world that, you know, in Europe or where I come from in America that we don't have and that we don't even think about. And uh, I would I actually be very helpful. Would though. be extremely helpful, yeah. absolutely. I, I just read recently uh, a paper saying that actually the most innovative applications regarding mobile come are coming out of Africa since two years. I would believe that. I mean, you know, people say that you know necessity is the mother of invention, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, and I find it really interesting that um, just since I've been living here in in Germany for for several months now. Uh, a big difference between here and, and the American mobile sector is that here, I think, maybe not most people, but a significant portion of people, including myself, use prepaid mobile, which is the same as what they use in many parts of the developing world. You only pay what you use. Whereas in the States, most people have contracts. You know, they have to pay a fixed amount of money uh, every month. And even if you only use a quarter of that amount... Uh, you're essentially losing money, right? Mm -hmm. um, and f with most companies, you, you basically have to guess how many minutes you're going to use a month. Are you going to use 200? Are you going to use 500? Are you going to use 1,000? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, you know and, and maybe it changes over time, but it's impossible. The, the cell phone plans are such that it's not as flexible. Right. So I wish that, that just like is the case in many parts of Europe, and especially in the developing world, um, where you, know, you can send a text message for pennies basically for for right. small amounts of money very very small amounts of money uh i wish that that would translate to europe and to yeah. to the developed world so since we are here at the transformation thinkers conference mm -hmm. uh would you consider mobile as one of the crucial critical drivers for transformation in these countries you were yeah absolutely i mean i think um you know mobile phones um are extremely crucial and transformative, um, especially in the developing world, where, where the telecom industry prior to the advent of mobile phones was just so slow and corrupt. And, yeah. and it would take, I think, many in many cases, years, maybe even decades to get phone lines. Uh, I know in the case of Senegal, which is what I've studied, um, you know, the, the Sonatel, which was the main telecom company, like Deutsche Telekom here in Germany, um, was just really poorly managed. During the rainy season, like, uh, you know, a significant portion of the phone lines wouldn't even work. Right. And uh, there were just all kinds of problems. And I think now where you get to the point where for less than 20 euros, you can buy a, a, a very basic Nokia cell phone or something, put a SIM card in it. And That's even cool. if you don't put any money on it, you know, if you have other people who want to call you, then you can talk to them for free. Right. Um,